the opener I um, was inspired to do because of Tony Takatani. Whenever I'm eating anything in the dining room, I'm thinking, I'm eating alone like Tony. Um, and I tried for a sad look, but I think it came off as bitchy. Sorry. Um, anyway, I was eating pancakes, by the way, if that wasn't clear. And I had pineapple juice instead of orange juice in my glass, which wasn't really clear either. Um, I also put way too much maple syrup on there for movie effect. <laughs> anyway, it's, um, I ate a star amber. I'm sure everyone's figured that out by now. And I'm going to do the Record Store Day, um, releases that I purchased. I purchased all of them online, and I meant to do this, like, last week, but I was really exhausted. I don't know what came over me. I just was not motivated. And I ate an apple a day. I figured an apple a day can fix any problem, but apparently it can't. Sleeping on the couch apparently can. I've been sleeping on the couch for like two nights because of a bug situation. So I'm trying to hurry this video up because I'm in my room where I last saw a bug. I will stop this video if anything happens like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna get started and turn this down. Okay, the first item I got was from the Strictly Discs wish list, which I always do the wish list, but most of the time they only get like one or two items from your list. And I only had like three items on there because I added one at the last second. And this was the only one I got, which was um, Built to Spill's new album, Untethered Moon. And this cost $20.99. Um, I, I think I kept the sticker, the uh, price sticker, but I didn't have it in the front of the sleeve. Came with this insert with the lyrics. And I think, I don't know how many copies, but I know that they inserted some translucent blue copies, but my copy is of course black. I, don't, I haven't seen one person with a blue copy, even though on Discogs it says a few people have it. And it came with the CD. I think the price sticker fell. Yeah. And it was $20.99. Oh, <laughs> there. Um, I already burned the CD to iTunes, and I'll probably use a song on the next Yoga Mix, because Mom's been asking for one. And there was actually a song that had a line in it that, oh, now is all that matters. There's nothing in the past, but that's all right. Mom's all about the now, so she, she probably would like that song on the next mix. Well, it's, um, it's, I'm the one in charge of the mixes, so she will like it. So next up on Midnight After Record Store Day, I stayed up because 1234Go was going to put their leftovers online. It took till 2.30 a.m. for the good stuff to get put up. I was glad I didn't give up. A lot of people were giving up on the good stuff ever showing up. They thought that the, the store was trolling people by putting one item every three minutes and they were things no one ever heard of. But I, I hung in there. That's probably why I've been exhausted. My whole sleep schedule's been off ever since, but it was it was worth it. Even if I am going to talk about some issues with some of the releases. Um, first up is Gold Frap. This is my copy, um, and the price sticker in the corner, $22.99, not a bad price, and I got number... 1293 out of 4,000. So, I, I liked the whole package, you know. It had a nice inner sleeve with lyrics. Very nice. And white vinyl. But the problem was that even though I cleaned it, it was making clicking noises right away, and 
It was mostly, I played side B first accidentally, but side A was the noisiest. Side B only had it for 20 seconds, but the first side was pretty much unplayable up till paper bag into pilots. There were, there were annoying clicking noises. I tried to contact Mute, but they said they didn't put out this release, and but they were very sorry. On Discog, someone said they got a replacement when they contacted Mute and they forwarded it to BMG, but I only got a sorry. So I contacted BMG, no word yet. So I have a feeling the only way that anything will happen is if I contact the store for a refund, but I just, I know they've been busy getting out all the orders the past couple weeks, so I really don't want to bother them. So I'll probably either buy another copy or just deal with it. <laughs> and I bought a second copy, which is still sealed. And you're probably wondering, why don't I just open this copy and find out if it's good? Well, I got it for Tudor, and this is the reason why I'm, you know, mo I motivated myself today to do this, because I really want to get this in the mail, but I wanted to show um, the number on this one, which is 768. So, yeah, this copy, completely sealed. Perhaps it's a good copy. I hope so. I know, Tudor, you want it for collectability, and there'll be re more reissues on Black Vinyl, but I really, really hope that it's a good copy anyway, because I really felt bad. As soon as the needle hit, you know, and it, the clicking started, I was just at a loss. I was like... Okay. This was a release that... I was really happy. You can hear a noise outside, sorry about that. Anyway, Mark Kozlik, What's Next to the Moon, ACDC cover album, and this was $16.99, which was a good price for this. There was only one issue with it. It didn't affect the sound at all. I've played this twice so far. There isn't even much popping or crackling or anything but let's see if I could show this on camera I'm trying to find oh yep I don't know if you can see that chip right there I they the pieces were not in the sleeve so it chipped before it was put in and on top of that it has a oh, dish warp on side B, you can really tell it's warped, but on side A, it just wobbles a little bit, but it's fine. Um, I'm not going to do anything about this because, as I said, it plays great. I really enjoyed it. It's just minor details. I just found it hilarious. Like, it looked like someone took a bite out of my copy. <laughs> um, and then I, I impulse bought the Decemberists Picaresque. Is that how you say it? Picaresque? Um, this album is um, limited to 5,000, but I'm trying to see. I don't think there's a number on it. Just limited to 5,000. Um, and it has this like OB strip with all the info. Um, 2005 breakthrough album on 180 gram. Red vinyl. It's translucent. This was a very nice package. I have no issue with this. Oh, I forgot to show the price sticker. Um, $27.99, which wasn't bad for what you get. I'll just show one of the records because they're both red. And it's heavyweight. 180 gram, obviously. <laughs> This is a heavy duty package, like it was, it's very weighty. And I'm trying to get everything that came with it out of here. It came with a lot, these postcards, which I want to show, but so. sorry, <laughs> they like stick in here. Okay. So we have postcards, which is really cool. 
I don't think I'm ever going to send someone a postcard using these, so they're just like collectibles to me. And then um, there's a live show download code. Oh, I see something in the corner of my eye. I hope it didn't make a noise because someone was messaging me. Um, I haven't ever had someone message me. Sorry about that. I kept the original inner sleeves, but I did put them in MoFi sleeves. And then on the inside, it's like a book. The lyrics are put into the packaging like this. Very cool. <laughs> okay. The packaging was kind of done like the Slint album, which also had um, info in the in the middle of the gatefold like that. Um, so I really thought the packaging was great. I, um, I don't know why I never owned this album. I owned one December album on CD, but I never bought this, even though I think I had it digitally. I know that on a yoga mix, I put We Both Go Down Together on that, and really the whole thing is great. It also has extras um, on the other record, I think stuff that yeah, five bonus tracks that weren't available on the CD, so that was also a reason for absolutely needing to get this purchase. So, last the last item I have to show isn't a Record Store Day item, but I just have no other video to put for this, so I'm just going to show it in this video to end this. But King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King Japanese copy. Um, I think this might be the 1976 version. I looked it up on Discogs um, to look at the OB to see which version it was. It probably says it on the record, <laughs> but I don't see. Put it in a MoFi sleeve. And I actually showed this album to Dad when he came over the other day because um, his favorite song on here is I Talk to the Wind. So um, I was showing him the lyrics and everything. Um, and I actually had to scold Dad because he could see that he couldn't read all the lyrics and he tried to remove the OB. And I said, don't, don't even dare touch that. I'm like, this is collectible. So I got a little bit pissy about that. Sorry, Dad, if you're watching. I just didn't want that OB to rip or to, I don't know if he was trying to just remove it, but it looked like he was trying to rip it off. But the King Crimson plays great. Um, I, I cleaned that one too, but it played great the first time. It only had like one pop on the second side when I first played it. The first side is absolutely beautiful though. There wasn't any, not even any crackle that I remember. And Epitaph is my favorite songs and it came in very clear. Like there were, there were these clear like, I don't know, you could feel the bass hit during that song, during the intense moments, the best thing ever. So anyway, those are my purchases for Record Store Day and my King Crimson album. I'm going to show VCLT in the next video, and I was playing Sun Ra, which Bruce Fear No Art sent me, and um, I got I got really curious, so that's why I opened it instead of doing an unboxing. But it looked it was really hard to open, so I'm kind of glad I opened it and played the records, knowing how long it's taken me. So anyway, take care, VC.